you don't need to ask the government. Don Yemens, head of NASA's Near-Earth Object Program, stated that no known asteroids or comets were on a collision course with Earth. Neither is a rogue planet coming to destroy us. If there were anything out there like a planet headed for Earth, it would already be one of the brightest objects in the sky. Everybody on Earth could see it. You don't need to ask the government. Just go out and look. It's not there. You don't need to ask the government. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Hey, if you don't shut up, I shall fireball, fireball your face. Thor News presents... Like a fireball, you just don't stop. Like a big balloon, waiting to pop. Okay, you know, I mean, a lot of them fly close by, like a lunar distance or two. And we always get these, like, 1940s and wood photos. So this is a pretty simple video. Will this be a trend? Is all the data bullshit? When did Fireball overtake Patron as the shot to order at a bar? All right, ladies and gentlemen, for reasons unbeknownst to me, I'm in such a good mood, I'm gonna talk about asteroids. Asteroids have been in the news a lot this last week, mostly about ginormous asteroid headed our way, 2004, BL86. And I want to say thanks to the Huffington Post for the Thor News shout out. Um, by saying it's ginormous, I assume that David, I'm not a number, I'm a free man, is a Thor News fan. I mean, who wouldn't be, especially if you cover asteroids and the super crazy weird state that is asteroids. At this point, for me to you, in all honesty, I have to believe the technology we have is so great, we have asteroids handled. Or, there's one on the way, it's going to wipe out a major city, or two. And they're going to distract us and not do anything about it. Granted, I could be totally wrong about either one. I'm just saying all the actions and all the evidence and everything I've put together, it's one of those two things. With that in mind, we're going to talk about this ginormous asteroid. And I wouldn't call it ginormous, man. It's not even a over a kilometer you know um and it's not even passing by that close for me to even turn on a sensationalizing alarm on thor news man it's got at least be one lunar distance the moon's pretty far away so if it's not passing less than one lunar distance or there aren't a whole ton of them i don't know many reasons to worry though my old stance was ginormous space rocks can bump into other less ginormous space rocks and alter their orbits. And from the charts we see, now nah, this is asteroids, man. When they show us these charts, it's like, oh my God, how do we even live? There's danger everywhere, asteroids everywhere. And when you talk to science, you're like, oh dude, outer space is so wide open. These things don't even come close to each other. It's like, what? Okay, so we should totally be preparing for cataloging and understanding asteroids but they're no real danger because outer space is just so wide they never even come close to each other or us really see how that works it don't make no damn sense a ginormous asteroid is headed our way but no need to worry nasa says asteroid 2004 bl86 estimated to be about one third of a mile in diameter will zoom harmlessly by earth later this month and that seems to be their number one job they don't spend a lot of time talking to us about the dangers of asteroids. They just show up to be like, nope, no doom at all. And then they vent anger at YouTubers. Like, those fucking guys, man, they should be burned at the stake. Bunch of charlatans giving science a bad name. That's good news, of course. And get this. The asteroid's size and proximity, about 745,000 miles from Earth at the nearest point in its flyby, or about three times the distance from Earth to the moon means it should be visible with nothing more than a good pair of binoculars. Well, I don't have those. One day, January 26th, will be the closest asteroid Broken Lettuce 86 will get to Earth for at least the next 200 years, said our good buddy Don Yeomans. He's the manager of NASA's Near Earth Object Program Office at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Hey Don, how'd you like to do an interview with me? Thor News interview, we both give a shit about near earth objects, right? You're a great bridge between science and science. I'm trying to be a great bridge between science and the people. Now I know you guys outreach to small children and high school students going into science, but your outreach for anybody 
outside of that boils down to we need more funding. So maybe we can work on that together, buddy. You know, you give us more honesty. I'll give you more access to the people. I'm not saying you're being dishonest, but like the video I just did on Venus, that photograph came out in 2007. It released it eight years later. You know, people, like, that's political. Like, politicians pull that kind of crap, man. You know what I'm saying? We bought that room for improvement. You guys can get more funding, but we need less eight-year chicanery. All right. I don't know. Asteroids kind of. Now let's go down the Huffington Post's science recommendations. Suggested for you. Hey, wait. You may want to stop now because this is the pure comedy part. Satire. Malcolm Jamal Warner comments on Bill Cosby allegations. Ah, man. That is just such a horrible story on every single level with everyone involved. I don't even want to comment on it. Feminist. Body positive pinups are unbelievably gorgeous. Man, that is such a horrible story on every single level. <laughs> I don't even want to get involved. <laughs> Hashtag truth be told. Oh, Huffpo, really? You're going to tell the truth for once? Zing. Sofia Vergara's life before modern family was very different. Way back in the day, 20 years ago when I was in college, I was playing football at a place called Midwestern State my first semester. And I used to, I think it was every Wednesday, at, every Wednesday at 6, I would make sure to be in my dorm room because on Telemundo, or was it Univision, there was a show called Fuere, Fuere, Fuere de Serie, Fuere de Serie. It had Sofia Vergara and, and the guy who, and the guy from The Simpsons who's always in the B costume. She was the most gorgeous woman on the planet. So every week, I would, even though the show was in Spanish, I, I watched for her. Because I'm attracted to women. Like magnet. No, we must have the same charge because they were repelled by me. Sweet. God bless everybody. Part one. She's like pink gold. That turn on. Of volcanoes. I'm your man, ladies. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. Zoo. You're right, sir. Asteroids are close. Zoo. This is a tough problem. I'm your host, Thor. Where are my brown dwarfs? Asteroid Fight Club is where we fight asteroids, and asteroids are a metaphor for anything that can destroy society. They're shut down, grandstanding cluster fudge. It was so ridiculous. You know, I don't even know what to say anymore. 2014, baby. So don't get all cocky, being like, oh yes, we know what we're talking about with science. You're still stuck. And so I'm taking you on a journey with me. Sometimes I just like to talk. And nowadays, I got a microphone and a recording system device, creator, compactor, suppressor, compressor. And then I stick it in the YouTube thingy. And I'm like, holy crap, look, what chances? <laughs> get ready, because this ain't funny. Asteroids are coming close to Earth. Don't be a dummy. Okay, that was dumb. When ancient humans contemplated expanses of time orders of magnitude beyond modern horizons. You don't need to ask the government. Just go out and look. It's not there. Hey, scientists. I want to remind you that Isaac Newton warned against using the law of gravity to view the universe as a mere machine, like a great clock. I just want what Newton wants. To reinforce stability and harmony in the civic world. Wouldn't that be nice? Hit the button, baby.